Hey there, Hayden from AMB, and today we're looking at the Norco Fluid HT2. This is their self-proclaimed ultimate single track adventure hardtail, big shoes to fill. So this bike's got 29 inch wheels, 120 mil fork, 130 mil dropper posts, and is available in a range of sizes. You can pick this bike up from your local advanced traders dealership for 1699. So the Fluid HT2 is the more affordable of the two Fluid models which are available from Norco. Uh, they share a lot of specification, notwithstanding the frame. So they both have the same build kit here. You can see with the boost spacing, plenty of tyre clearance and internal cable routing. This bike also has an 11 speed group set and a 120 mm coil sprung fork that has compression and rebound adjust. Drivers taken care of by an 11 speed Shimano group set, which has a 51 tooth maximum range. And we also have a 130 mil dropper post across all sizes. So perusal of the geometry sheet for the fluid hardtail shows numbers that we would expect for a trail hardtail. The head angle comes in at 66 and a half degrees, which to me is right on the money for a 120 mil fork. We do expect to see that, particularly on a hardtail, your head angle is going to steepen as you're riding through rough terrain. So having it at about 66 and a half is great for a bike of this manner. Funnily enough, this bike's head angle doesn't actually slacken out, a, uh, steepen up a whole lot while you're riding, but we'll talk more about that later. We've also got a super short 430mm rear end. That keeps that bike really playful. It loves to manual, pop off stuff, jump. Really suits the character of this bike. Finally, we've got a 74 and a half degree seat tube angle, which is nice and upright, keeps things comfortable whether you're riding on the flat, up something steep, or shooting down a trail. The Fluid HT is available in five sizes. I've got the extra large here. I'm six foot three. It's got a 500 mil reach and 29 inch wheels. The medium through to the extra small actually have 27 and a half inch wheels to help those riders with shorter legs make sure the bike has the right fit. I found the ergonomics on this bike really comfortable, particularly the seat. This is just an in-house Norco cross-country seat, but I loved it. I actually looked at trying to get one for one of my personal bikes. I could spend hours on this thing. Uh, it fit my sit bones really well, and happy as Larry pedaling away on that thing. Going to the other contact points, we've got a pair of WTB lock-on grips. Quite narrow, but really nice and soft and comfortable. They're paired on a 750mm bar with a 50mm stem, which to me is bang on, regardless of size for a bike with this kind of ride character. So looking at the components of, on this bike, this was my first experience using Shimano's 5100 11-speed drivetrain. Uh, as you'd expect from a Shimano drivetrain, it shifted really well under load or not. Uh, it was just a reliable performer to me. I didn't have any dropped chains or anything like that during my time of testing. The smaller models have a 170 mil two-piece crank with the larger ones having a 175 mil crank. Not typically my preference, but if I'm honest, that was just a number on the spec sheet once I was out on the trail and not something I really noticed as a positive or a negative. Moving towards the front of the bike, we've got some Tektro two-piston brakes with a 180 mil rotor on the front. A reliable performer that at, at this price point, if you can get reliability and single finger braking, I think you're spot on. So the dropper post on this bike is a Trans-X model. It's got 130 mil of drop. If I'm honest, I'd like to see that increase on the bigger sizes. I felt that uh, I'm quite tall on an extra large at six foot three. I've got to have a lot of seat tube up there to get it to where I can comfortably pedal. And with only 130 mil of drop, I did find the seat hitting me in the legs quite a bit on descents, particularly when I was trying to be cool and do some jumps and whips and stuff like that. The wheels on this bike, a nice wide alloy rim, 32 hole, six bolt hubs with boost spacing. One thing I didn't love, uh, cup and cone bearings. A lot of people say this isn't an issue, but to me, I'm, I'm not a big service or I'm not big into maintenance. Cartridge bearings for me are the go-to on a bike like this that wants to get thrashed because they've got a longer shelf life and it's pretty easy to just bang a new set of bearings in there and not have to worry about any adjustments or anything. So I did mention earlier a uh, quick little stat about the reach and a hardtail and the head angle and how those things all talk to each other with the suspension fork. You could argue that the fork performance is even more important on a hardtail than on a dually. This SR Suntour fork is coil sprung and has compression and rebound adjust. They all work fine and have a limited range of adjustment, but I did find that this fork wasn't great on repeated hits, specifically through rock gardens and repeated chatter. The bushings, <laughs> they, resent, like, they had quite a bit of play, so I was getting a lot of feedback up through my arms while I was riding. That kept the ride height quite high so the head angle wasn't diving down through rough sections 
So that's a good thing, it was keeping it nice and slack. But then it was also, I was getting a lot of feedback through my body, repeated hits, quick rock gardens, things of that nature. So fun factor on the trail, uh, Norco have fostered a really eclectic mix of chassis stiffness, uh, componentry performance and an overall brutish nature that to me really suits what this bike is suited for. When I get on this bike, I just want to grip it and rip it, you know, it just makes you want to go. It's a fun bike to just get on and pin it down your local trail as fast as you can. I do actually think, funnily enough, that the fork performance or lack thereof actually lends itself to this because it keeps the head angle nice and steady and you're not out there looking for the nice smooth lines so that the fork can absorb those bumps. You just want to hold on and go for it. So this bike does come in at around 15 and a half kilos in an extra large, but I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. When you're talking about fun factor on the trail, this thing wants to go down. Gravity is pulling you down and the weight of this bike really helps. It also helps it track through rough sections and point and shoot, get on this thing and just go. On the way back up, the drivetrain was super reliable and the seat really comfortable. So happy to climb on this thing for as long as necessary to get to the next trail. I wouldn't be taking this bike for a local cross country race or anything like that. I think it's a bit heavy and brutish for that kind of nature. But if you're a exuberant rider, young or old, who wants to get out there and smash, this thing's perfect for you. So what is our take of the Norco Fluid HT2? To me, I kind of envision this bike and the rider of this bike is the kind of person who's gonna have a speaker in their back pocket, they're blasting Metallica, they're out there, they're having a the time, they want all their friends to come with them. This bike is capable, good looking, and has handling that's a little rough around the edges, but to me, I think it has a really good suited market here in Australia, and if you're the kind of person who wants to just get out, have fun, and not worry about anything on your hardtail, this one's good for you. So this bike's character is supported by a really reliable group set, and set of brakes. It is worth mentioning there's also a HT1 version of this available. It's a few hundred dollars more and it's got an air sprung fork that should have a bit more adjustment and some better performance. That may be worth looking at spending the extra money for that upgrade if you see yourself having this bike for a long time. Yep.